let us go further and ask this bigger question something like this happens and uh, then and that means a connection is being made to the knowledge store somewhere high and then it cannot be said to be my knowledge it cannot you cannot call it my memory it is uh, the universal memory it is nobody's memory yet it is contributed by many so there is a funny thing that um, i realized this a little bit during my experiences and such kind of introspection exercises that uh, what we call as uh, the universal mind or you can name it anything you want is actually a group mind and and then i recorded this um, podcast episode on the group minds and while i was recording that many more insights appeared many more questions they were solved and uh, answers to some puzzles which uh, i thought is kind of imagination of people or kind of too far fetched to be true it all made sense suddenly and it was a big revelation simply by talking on the group minds what was the big revelation i found that every mind is a group mind <laughs> i i couldn't find any exception including this mind which i call as my mind it is big possibility that this is not a single mind it is a group mind now what is a single mind what is a group mind it is hard to define like this it is hard to put a draw a boundary where my memory ends and your memory starts it all makes a lot of sense now that uh, our boundaries of our mind are also the boundaries of our ignorance that is why it looks like my mind like a single mind this is not so as soon as you drift into the landscape of mind the mental landscape you will find there is no hard and fast boundary there there is no natural boundaries or fences around this mind it is not there what has happened is through habituation through conditioning it uh, this mind uh, accesses only a few areas in the memory my name my family my house my car my job blah 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 back next day same next day same you will find that very rarely anything new happens in our lives sometimes you may come across a new book new idea and there is expansion of the mind into the territory of the author who has written that book sometimes you see a new movie new visuals appear in your mind that means you are extended into the mind of the artist the movie producer who has imagined those things in his mind so and there is a way to connect to other minds in this physical world which is what we call as communication but uh, because we are habitual of this mode of um, the, the waking state of the mind we do not look into the direct way of accessing the memories of the universal mind the universal mind is actually defined as a group mind a collection of all the minds now that assume that there we assume that there are individual minds and the universal mind is a collection of the individual minds and that is how i have defined the universal mind everywhere in my blogs and whatever i speak in the videos and all and whenever i talk to you this is assumed that the universal mind is a collection of tiny minds including all the objects and worlds and everything but uh, when i was thinking about the group minds it turns out that it is exactly opposite of the definition universal mind is all there is and the individual minds are illusions you cannot define the universal mind in terms of this tiny independent minds sea of countless individuals that will be a, a very inaccurate definition but it is practical so it is going on <laughs> because that is how we understand the universal mind otherwise it otherwise there, there is no way to understand it for an ordinary person who has seen only one mind how are you going to define this sea of memories to that person so while thinking like this drifting like this 
this huge huge revelation happened and how do we know that this is important how do we know that i didn't simply imagine these things and then assume them to be true just like i said you need to keep the intellect on when you're drifting so now once you have harvested once you have dug out a gem from the this very very infinite mine of universal mind now you need to need use the intellect to do the assessment to do the cross check and let me see if it yes the idea is very nice it is very elegant and beautiful that universal mind is all there is and that the individual minds are actually they appear to be there because of our ignorance because because of this habitual nature of the this organism the jeev to remain within its the boundaries that it has created for itself by refusing to look beyond itself this can be only called as ignorance nothing else so it is not a fundamental limitation on the jeev it it has it is in the state like this in the waking hours so you use intellect to find out whether this makes any sense or not so in that uh, podcast episode i have done that so if you get time you listen to it it all makes sense actually there is something interesting that you must have heard about um, mediums who channel the entities the disembodied entities now we don't speak about them because obviously for many of you it is beyond your experience so if you are doing the experiments that i suggested you will meet them but some are gifted they are always in connection with the the sea of memories now you cannot say other minds because you see leave that idea behind now get rid of that idea limited mind it is always interconnected with everything else it's a matter of focusing the attention some people are gifted like this and they can get hold of the so called disembodied beings and there is something interesting that i found in many of the channeled material now most of it is garbage but uh, some things they appear there which are common to almost all of them is that the entity has no name or the name is given for only for practical purposes and what does it suggest it suggests that it is not one individuals have names sometimes it is um it, it takes on a name because we are so used to names so it, that uh, entity will take on a name for you but uh, the interesting thing about uh, that is that the medium will hear many sounds many voices sometimes as if it is many people speaking at the same time but speaking the same sentence this is their experience their direct experience i have never seen it myself so i cannot say but uh, such phenomena now can be explained now we have a you can say theory behind these observations so there are some horror movies which are well researched and i have seen a few and uh, sometimes the the character that is possessed by demon will speak in voices of many what what does that mean it means the demon is not a single mind there is no single personality there there is no single individual there it it, it actually looks like 10 or 20 people speaking through that one mouth it is not a um, simple imagination of the artist or of the writer of that story so it, it there is an explanation now it is more possible that this this is actual experience of somebody uh, which the writer has uh, researched and incorporated in the story there are some reports of um, exorcism so there are well, well researched movies uh, that go into exorcism let us not take this thing as a fact so their reports are that usually the and the a weak mind is possessed by other minds disembodied beings so usually there is a whole bunch of them who possess the person not a single one it is rare that there will be a single entity that's what i heard 
So, right now, right here, most of the mind are in contact with many, many minds without their, <laughs> without their knowledge, which, which I don't think is that important now because now I'm not talking about the communication like we are having right now. I'm in contact with you, you are in contact with me and through the physical channel. Through the mental channel, we are in contact. So, another revelation happened during such introspections. Although, there is kind of very difficult to get any kind of evidence for these things. So, and that is that uh, your only protection from uh, the negative kinds, the negative disembodied entities, is to shift into a positive mode. And always remain there. That is the only protection. Very logical, isn't it? Because there is no boundary between this mind and that mind, and there is always a contact. And the, our current thinking is my mind is isolated. I can, nobody can know what is there in my mind. And that is the truth of the waking state, not the absolute truth. That is the relative truth, half truth. In waking state, the other waking mind is engaged in their own activities, their own private memory, personal memory. And this, my mind, is engaged in this activity, usually because of the senses. The senses are active and senses are localized. So, this, this senses are what that are giving us a feeling of being localized in the body and the world. Otherwise, it's all open. <laughs> it's all one, non-local mind. So there, there is no protection from something that is uh, engaged in negativity. You can say an area of the universal mind that is negative in nature. So not an area, it is a happening because area also points to a space. But this mind is not in space. It is happening right now, right here. The only thing that differentiates one mind from the other is the activity of the mind. For example... All the radio stations are broadcasting right now. But uh, the song that you hear is always from one radio station because you've tuned it to that radio station. Uh, when the radio is tuned, what the radio is doing, those who know the electronics, they, they will understand. That it is filtering out everything else except this one frequency of that station. So if you're listening to 98.3, the electronics and the radio is now resonating with only that frequency although the antenna is receiving all and you can say it is focusing of attention on this narrow band and therefore uh, the experiences of only one radio station only one song that is what our mind is doing during the waking state it is very narrow very very narrowly focused all the activities of all the minds now you can say it's all the minds or you can say universal mind is happening right now right here it's non-local and the time is also not that hard and fast. All the past, future, present, everything is happening here and now. So, it's all a matter of not paying attention or not resonating with the negativity and you will be protected. And your experience, this bunch of memories will remain unaffected by the negativity. From the point of view of the universal mind, you can see it is totally uh, ordinary thing. It has no such preference. No negative, no positive. There is nothing like that in the universal mind. The mantra or your uh, yantra or whatever is not going to save you from negativity if there is a negativity in you. It's a big realization. And I researched then here and there and I found something similar. That nothing works when the negativity goes very, very high only thing that works is our own positivity. There is no natural preference for positive or negative in the universal mind. There is a preference for evolving. That's all there is. It is negative, positive. It does not care. It's all one for it. These are all man-made things. Negative, positive, good and bad, beautiful and ugly. These are all man-made things. This is how, this is what happens when you drift <laughs> like this. In the memory, you will get some new information and then you use the intellect to verify it. 
probably because this is my ass so probably and there won't be a perfect verification always there won't be and the truth won't be evident very clearly but uh, you can connect the points here and there